you kidding me? That's eight or ten. I ain't never seen anything like this before. Since 2012, missile baits have been crafted on home waters and in the heartland. After 12 years, we still hold fast to the same commitment. Deliver a quality American-made product that puts big fish in the boat. Yes! And wins That's tournaments. A Mississippi River. Throwing a jig with a missile bait D-bomb today. You control the St. John's River. You're watching American Lure Stories where we share the stories of our baits and bring recognition to others who hold to the same commitment we do. Made in America. Okay, everybody, welcome to the inaugural episode of American Lure Stories, where we talk about the whole story, the whole making, and how a bait comes into fruition in the American way, the American dream, to catch more bass, to catch more fish, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we got a good episode for our first one here. We're going to bring in special guest Ish Monroe. Going to bring him in, and we're going to talk about the Missile Baits D-Bomb. Now, we, we brought Ish in because uh, probably, I'm not sure if there's anybody who's caught more fish that I'm aware of on the D-Bomb other than Ish. He's been fishing it from day one. He's the one that really put the put the bait on the map as far as publicity is concerned and educating everybody on on what it's all about. Uh, so we're going to bring him in a little bit, but uh, in just a second. But we're just going to tell the whole story of of that lure, kind of how it became designed, why we wanted to design it, and uh, and kind of the the process of how that happened, and then you know kind of talk about the popularity and and then you know all the other uses that that people are using for for that D bomb. So. Uh, shoot! Without further ado, let's uh, let's bring in Mister Mister Ish Monroe. Ish, welcome to the show, hey. buddy. Glad to be here. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I was just, uh, you know, we, we were talking about doing this whole concept, and then we um, and like, I was like, well, we got to do the the D bomb the, the first show. We might as well just bring bring Ish on, right? So I, I like it. I mean, you designed the best flipping bait on the planet. Heck yeah, man! It was. Uh, it was it was pretty wild. So I, I don't I don't know if you I know you know most of the story on the back end, but I, I'm going to just tell everybody, including yourself, uh, like a little bit yeah. about the the start of it. Because so I so I I designed the D bomb before we even uh, were selling anything missile. Missile wasn't even a uh, a real live entity at the time. Um, so I was designing at the at the time five different baits to, to uh, you know, start with for, for missile baits. We had the D-bomb, the, the tomahawk worm, we had the drop crawl, uh, we had the twin turbo. Uh, and and so, so we were just starting with, you know, just a few baits. And in doing that, it, we were, you know, trying to make sure we got each one of them right. Well, with the D-bomb, we went through more prototypes with the D bomb than than any of the other ones. I know you got some of the prototypes before they were out there on the market, but I've got a couple of the drawings that people can can probably see. We'll kind of you know show you show you these probably a little little closer. But even just with the drawings, uh, we went through. I went through. I think about six or eight versions. Well, right here it says revision number nine. So it, at least nine, <laughs> at least nine revisions. I think this was one of the, one of the later ones. Nope. Here's revision 13. Excuse me. Uh, oh, so it went wow. to a bunch of revisions. I think we cut about five different prototype molds. And before we, we brought the D bomb out, I know that, that you and I, you were, you know, like the master flipper puncher. And, and so you were kind of the, you know, what works and, and, I should also say two years, two years before we started missile baits, uh, I won the California Delta tournament by by punching, and I was punching a beaver and a, a BB cricket. So I had a, you know, we had that kind of background. You you with your background, me with ha just having won that, and then going from I felt like I sucked at punching and flipping to where I just won a tournament doing that. Uh, so I was like, wow, I, maybe I'm okay at it, uh, but. You know, in that in that process, as I was flipping and punching, I realized there's there's a gap, you know, in, in what we're what we're missing in in you know just the whole market. And there was a we did not have a bulky bait that you could pitch and fl uh, flip into the heaviest cover and get it in and out 
and then the other the other caveat what I was trying to do is make something to where when you didn't move it it still had some action and that was my my biggest yes. uh that was my biggest uh, pet peeve if you will about the beaver is that man when you stopped it so did the action uh right it's a it's a great bait on the fall on the drop because it has kind of an erratic fall it's it's almost like a, a flipping tube but has way better hookup ratio and, and that's what the beaver's right. really good at. So the the big ribs were something that I kind of brought in from, you know, like the ringworms that I grew up fishing on the James River and uh, all around Virginia. Those things have been around for forever. So I wanted a bigger, thicker version of it. We went through a, a number of different revisions until we till we kind of got it to where it would move and it would undulate underwater. And, uh, man, we, we hit a home run with that one r- right out of the gate. That's kind of how that that whole process was we were working with a mold company down in Alabama that's not even in existence anymore. Um, and, and they were worked with us and they were patient with me because it was my first go around, uh, designing, designing soft plastics. And, and they, they put that thing, uh, you know, like I said, I think it was five different actual prototype molds that they cut before they, we got it right. And, um, and then I think with the, with the thickness, the length, the flappers and, and all, it just, it all came together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the best, like I said, the best bait on the planet for flipping and punching. And like you say, you know, it kind of was one of those deals is, is I remember putting it in the water at Lake Okeechobee on the back of that medlock jig and watching yep. that the whole thing move without even moving your rod. Yes. And, and you know, that was key to the tournament that, you know, we'll get into a little bit later, but you know, when you designed it, yeah, I, I see you went through over 13 revisions yeah. of the bait yeah. to get it perfect. Yeah. But and that's sometimes what it takes. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, we just jump right into that, man. Let's just jump right into there because, th- okay, so we started the company in January of, t- of 2012 introduced the D bomb, yep. had a good, had a good response. We were lucky when, when I had a prior relationships with a, a number of different places, we had five key accounts that brought in our entire line of missile baits from day one. Uh, you know, tackle warehouse was one of them, green top sporting goods, marks outdoors, Susquehanna fish and tackle, uh, and Dave's tournament tackle, uh, down in North Carolina. Those were the, the like from day one, we sent orders out to all five of those with all of our products. So it was really amazing to be in some really prestigious, hard to get in um, establishments yeah. right off the bat. Uh, so, but you know, we had we had moderate success the first couple months with good, you know, pretty good sales, and then comes March of 2012 when we go down to Lake Okeechobee, and as you mentioned, uh, it, you put it on the back of that Medlock jig, caught over 110 pounds, and ended up blowing out that tournament. Yeah, it's still the uh, four-day record on Lake Okeechobee for tournament wins. And, you know, it was done on the D-bomb, but it was phenomenal when, you know, it's me, you, and Ike, and we're at Buckhead Ridge, and yep. we're just down there and getting our tackle together. And I'm like, let me go throw this thing in the water. And I put it on the back of the jig. I'm like, that looks pretty. And you pitch it in the water, and you just watch it move on its own. And I just go, oh, my God, that's just – that that's it. That's That's, you know, that's my new bait. Yeah, so and so we got the we got the money maker up. right here for you is the the bruiser <laughs> flash. I know that was your color bruiser flash. that you had yes, at, the, at, at the time, and that's that's it right there. You can kind of kind of see it. You know, it's got the blue with the silver hologram flake on one side, the black with the silver hologram hol, hol, uh, hologram flake on the other, and it's just uh, and, something special about that color, huh? Yep, still the number one selling color, correct? Yeah, that and Superbug, they they battle back and forth. Like some months it's Superbug, they do. Some months it's it's Bruiser Flash, but they're they're in a league of their own. They really are. Those yeah, two. Yeah, that's those that, those two cuss awesome colors. But yeah, so I get out there the first day of practice, and I I mean it is I'm getting bit, and I'm getting bit a lot, and I'm just like, man, this thing this thing I don't I don't know what it is. There was just something special about that bait. And, you know, there's a lot of competitors. I mean, if any fish like Okeechobee, there's no place that you can ever really go to 
that there's not boats. Right. And that's I like a uh, needle in a haystack is finding out something outside of the crowds. It just, it almost never, ever happens at Okeechobee. Yeah. Right. And so it's one of those things where it was, okay, if I'm getting bit this much, everybody's got to be getting bit. And then all of a sudden I roll by Tommy Biffle and he's like, man, it's, it's, it seems a little tough out here. And I'm like, you never can believe what Tommy says, but it right. was one of those deals where the bite was actually a little bit different than previous years at Lake Okeechobee. You couldn't just go down the bank and wind a chatterbait and completely crush them. Yeah, it, it was, a. Uh, um, we were there in March and it was a little bit later. Usually we were there in, you know, February yeah. or even January. So yeah, it was a different bite. And, and the bite that I think that you were keying in on was the, the spawn in tilapia. Cause it was like one of the first big waves yeah. of, of heat. Not, not like enough for the, Joe Rogan's calling me, uh, trying to, you know, get in on this action, but no. Um, so he, <laughs> the tilapia were spawning and they were up in these reeds and, and you figured out exactly the types of places that they, that they were sitting, right? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, they were sitting basically little spawning either on the heads of the reeds, or if you saw pockets, like there'd be a straight bank of reeds. And then all of a sudden there's a little pocket in there and you could flip in there and just let it sit. And, you know, once again, letting that jig, when you flip it in there, just kind of sit there and Bassmaster has old footage of it. I mean, it's me pitching it in there and then getting bit, you know, it's kind of like I'm, I'm fingering the bait a little bit or the, mm -hmm. the line a little bit to get it to, to shake a little bit more. And it was just key to let that bait sit in one place and not move it out away from it because it's like sitting in a bed. Yeah, And that's how you catch a mother effing mm -hmm. 10. I'm the big stick guy. I fish to catch big fish, and I feel like I'm going to catch the limit fish to go with it. Biggin, 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 biggin. Stay peg. Oh my God. Stay peg. Let me get my hands on you, girl. Get my, get my hands on you. Got her. Wes, this is the 10. Got. It. Golly G, sorry you're gonna have to beep that, but golly G, give me some. <sighs> yes, <laughs> yeah, mother effing ten. <laughs> and it was it like day? <laughs> was that day two that you you caught a you caught a ten or no, it was like was a nine fourteen or something? And, and you, yeah, it, it was the right? last day. No, it was the last day. Oh, it was the, it last, was the last day. day. It was the last day, last fish in the last hour before I had to leave. And I already had a pretty decent bag. I was I was in the mid twenties at that time, into high twenties, and then all of a sudden that thing bites, and it's just like, oh god, it's a giant. And you know those big Florida bass; they got those big heads and skinny bodies. Yeah. I mean, any other if that was a Texas fish, with it being that big, like size wise, yeah, it would have been well over a ten. Yep. Yeah, but you put it in the boat, and you looked at. I think it was West, was it West Miller is your cameraman. I think it was West. I think it was yeah. West. You're it like, West, West, this is a mother time. effing 10 right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to believe it. Sorry. You got to uh, believe that. Dude, it was okay. right on live. They, it, went, it went on live. Like, you, you did, yeah. they didn't believe it. it oh, was, did it go on live? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was fantastic. <laughs> I but, was too busy doing live to watch live. Oh, my God. It was great. But the uh, going back to practice, you, when you came back and you told me how many bites that you got on that thing, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought you were lying. Uh, and then Mike looks at me. He's like, dude, is he he's, is he really serious he got that many bites? I mean, we, we, we were questioning how many bites you got. And then I remember the second day of practice, I tied me on a big jig and, and put a D-bomb on the back. And it was like the third reed clump that I pitched to, I caught a seven-something. And then I was like, oh, crap. Ish was not lying. Like this is the deal. This is one hundred percent the deal. I remember I got. I, I probably still have a picture of that fish somewhere. It was a monster. And uh, did I catch any fish like that in the tournament? No, I did not. But uh, I still caught. I had an okay tournament. I made day three, so that was that was good for me. Yeah. But man, you had you had that thing totally dialed in and ended up blowing out. And so fast forward after that tournament. No, no, no. During that tournament, let me let me let me back up. During that tournament. We had a, uh, a dis distributor rep um, from a company called Maurice at the time, which 
was a distributor that sold to a bunch of big boxes, and they had a meeting set up the week of our tournament at Okeechobee. The tournament was that week. You 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 remember most of this ish, I'm sure. Yeah. But everybody else yeah. out there does not probably doesn't know that they had it. They had a meeting with the buyers from Dick Sporting Goods during the week of your tournament. So they, I think the meeting was like that Friday. So they, um, Chris Graham, uh, the guy that was our rep there, he went into the meeting with Shane and the other buyers. Doug Gunning was was in there, and he was working for Dick's at the time. So they are in there. And and he pulls out this this new bait. He says, "I got a new bait. I want to show you. It's called missile baits." And the buyers from Dicks go, "Oh yeah, Ishman Ishman just caught thirty five pounds on that yesterday. He was telling everybody about it, and he said nobody <laughs> nobody had it. Yeah, it was it was it was awesome. And he and he's like, "Oh well, so you already know about it?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, we already know about it. Let's see it." So they look at it. And next thing you know, before the end of the meeting, <laughs> they wanted to put our baits in fifty stores, and we were like, "Oh man, that's fantastic." Well, it, you ended up winning the tournament by a landslide. They called. They called yes. him back. They called Chris back the next week and said, "Do we want to put it in a hundred stores?" And you're like, "Oh man, that's fantastic!" So you know, we st- we make you know we're making orders to put it. And then <laughs> about two weeks after that, they called back and they said, "We want to put it in two hundred stores." So all of a sudden, they went from they went from putting it in fifty, and the more they thought about it, the more they looked at it, and the more traction it got, and the more they sold on Tackle Warehouse and wherever else. They they went ahead and, and bumped it up to two hundred stores. So, I mean, really, a large Ooh. part of your of the win was credited to a getting into Dick Sporting Goods and then b being in two hundred stores. Uh, you know, right right off the bat, uh, I think we shipped that order in, in June of that year, and uh, so from June that time uh, for the next couple of years, we had a ton of D bombs and a ton of missile baits in uh, Dick Sporting Goods. So that was pretty, but I mean, you put that thing on the map, you know, it, it closed that deal for us. It opened up a bunch of other doors. So that was really, uh, it was really pivotal. Yeah, every dealer at Okeechobee had to have it. Oh my God. And they still sell a bunch. I mean, all those, you know, like we've got uh, yeah. the, the, the 25 count bags of D bombs now. And every every dealer around Okeechobee sells the fire out of these things. This is ballistic bruiser. It's kind of a twist of of bruiser flash, a little more blue in it. And uh, we sell a lot of those. And bruiser flash, superbug, all those all those blue type colors down there uh, now. But that's that's a pretty cool pretty cool deal. But um, so let's fast forward a little bit from from the D bomb uh, in, in the Okeechobee story. And there's a fun story that I want you to tell Ish. That I I've I've heard it, but I want to hear it again, and I think it really opened up a lot of other anglers' eyes to, especially this one angler in particular, to the power of the D bomb. And that was uh, I know when you went out filming for Tackle Warehouse with a friend of yours, a friend of mine, a friend of ours, Mr. Jared Littner. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get the D bomb on them. I call it dropping bombs on them. Another one. Wow, that's a little bit smaller, but still a fish. Got that one. The Missile Baits D bomb. I mean, gosh, candy grass. That's awesome. Nice one. Good job. Oh, nice. Nice fish. Jared, I have to tell you about that fish. Oh, on the Missile Baits D bomb right there. Got him. Got him. Oh, got him. Oh, nice. Like I say, I just love flipping mats. You know, we've caught several, you know, out here punching mats this today, so. What's this wee business? Oh, well, me, you know, well, you can't help it. The missile bait's <laughs> D-bomb. What else did you expect from it? You were fishing the candy grass color D-bomb, and he was pitching something else. I don't, I don't remember, I don't know if it was a beaver or some other type of flipping bait, but it was not a D-bomb. And it, I, just go ahead. It was not a D-bomb. Yeah, it was uh, the deal. He calls me up. You know, we're good friends. He lives in California. I live in California at the time. And he was just like, let's go and fish the Delta. I'm like, Delta bites good. Let's go. And it was just one of those deals where it was like the first bank we pull up on. I start flipping. And I mean, I'm getting so many bites. He's like, just take take the front of the boat. Just 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 keep catching them on it. It'll make for a great show. And you just see him and he's constantly ducking his head back and forth, 
And he's like, Oh, you got to give me, you got to give me one of those. I, I have to have one of those. And, you know, and tackle warehouse was already selling them and people saw that on the Delta and it was just like, Oh my God, we got to get this bait. And he starts flipping that bait and he starts catching them. And it was just a wonderful day on the water of just catching bass. And anytime you catch bass, it's, it's fun. Yeah, no doubt. I, I got it. You told me about that. I think that day you told you like, you're not going to believe what happened. This is really funny. And then it was probably a week <laughs> or two later because I think he he had his feelings hurt so bad because you just because t- Jared's a very good puncher and very good flipper, <laughs> and you put the work to him. Great, great, yeah. Work to him, and and then he yeah, realized the it was a bait. So he bomb has, yeah. That's the in the summertime. That's the uh, that's the ticket. It's the summer of the fall, the spring, the winter. I mean, I <laughs> that that the D bomb is the one of the baits that lives in my boat 24 seven. Like, I don't care what lake you go to across the country. You know, I, I I've won with it, you know, and, and that's the, the great part about it is, is, you know, I've won in Texas with it. I've won in California with it. I've won in Florida with it. So coast to coast, it is a bait that, you know, catches them. Yeah, um, so, Let's just so for everybody out there that you know they go in there and there's forty some you know D bomb colors. Uh, give people a like a little quick guys. I know you keep your colors pretty simple. Give everybody a quick color yes. guide about like time of year, parts of the country that you go to, kind of what your top two or three or four choices. And if they're not working, or if you think something else is going on, you might you might add in a, a different color. Just kind of gonna tell everybody about that. Okay. So, you know, we start off in the, we're going to start off the January, uh, February timeframe, and that's always going to be Bruiser Flash. Uh, Bruiser Flash is just a great color, black and blue, anywhere you go in the country, early season. It works all year long, but early season, it is to me the best color to have tied up. Dirty water, clear water, stained water, Mm -hmm. it is the best. And then when you start rotating from there, the fish start to get on beds. And so I start to like to fade towards more natural colors. Mm -hmm. And that's where we go to Superbug Mm -hmm. or um, Green Pumpkin Magic. uh, One of those colors, something a little bit more Green Pumpkin in it, but still having that dark to it. And then as I roll into the summer, uh, the bluegill pattern. Yeah, green pumpkin red, definitely. Yeah. You know, any green pumpkin color, I, I I keep it pretty simple on those. I carry green pumpkin red, green pumpkin magic, and regular green pumpkin. You know, yep. those are the three green pumpkin. Plus, well, Superbug has green pumpkin yeah, in it. Yeah, but it's but more of a black it's blue still, color. It's yeah. a cross. In be- it's a cross. Right. It's, it's a cross for me. Then we start rolling into the, the summertime where the bluegill start to get up on the bluegill beds and the bass are relating to the bluegill. The grass is growing mm-hmm. and you can't go wrong with candy grass. Candy yep. grass is to me that bluegill pattern and they just they love it when the fish get on bluegill. Then we're rotating into the summertime. Uh, El Diablo has won me a bunch of money. Um, I've got pictures uh, on my social media, I know Missiles put it up there yep. where I have a crawdad uh, from the Toyota Series tournament and El Diablo sitting there side by side, and they look identical. Right, and, and and that's one great thing that you've done is you you being a fisherman, you've matched a lot of colors. I mean, you've had guys tell you, oh well, this or that, and you kind of look at it, but you've taken the job like there's i've never seen anything like el diablo but it imitates a crawdad perfectly that el diablo was was it was a low that's kind of how i rotate it was a low-key secret on the delta for for a little bit and it was right around the time you won that tournament and we sold a a strong amount of those (laughs) in especially in california for that and it sounds like it feels like it's kind of like petered out a little bit but i know the fish hadn't stopped biting it it was just it was a hot thing there for a little bit because of the especially because of your win well you've also created some other great colors you had a little influence from uh dr ricky shabazz and you know his rotten tomato color and that's what's kind of transpired with you know the the el diablo has become now is rotten tomato is the new hot color or the delta crawl color 
that is available exclusively at Fisherman's Warehouse. Yep. Um, and so those have been huge keys for, you know, Delta sales. You've got the biggest retailer in Northern California with exclusive colors just for the Delta. Then, yeah, El Diablo's going to – sales are going to slow down a little bit, but we've got two great colors. And, Very true. you know, I've, I've won tournaments on – both of those new colors as well. And so, you know, I, I, I can't tell you rotten tomato when we first got it in, it was flying off the shelves and it was summertime and it's going to fly off the shelves again. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get some other baits in that same color because mm-hmm. it's just a really good color. <laughs> and then we kind of roll into the fall and it's getting back to me, the, the darker colors again and the bluegill patterns because they're feeding up on bait fish for the fall. And, so you're back to, you know, once again, the candy grass colors and, and and possibly a few others that imitate bluegill real well. We've just got so many wonderful colors. And every time you show me one, I'm just sitting there just like, I, I really don't want to add that to my box, but I have to. <laughs> right. Because it, it, it looks so good. And you you get in those situations of you match that hatch and you're going to catch more fish. And, and, and that's what missile baits has done, you know, with, with all of their baits is is they, they've got colors designed to look realistic to the fish. And when it does that, you're just going to catch more fish. Yeah. Right on. Uh, you know, it's wild because you and I look, look at this bait and all we see is flip bait and and punch bait. Uh, and that's really kind of what we designed it for at the beginning. But since, since it's come out, I can't tell you the number of different uses that I've I've had uh, people tell me that they've they use and they catch big bass for and things that I never even would have thought of or never even would have tried like fishing it on a Carolina rig. I had some guys on the Tennessee River tell me that they had won like mm-hmm. four or five big team tournaments on their lake. Yeah, I think that was Chickamauga uh, Carolina rigging a D bomb, and they said, "Man, we tried." straight worms we tried other other baits but there's something about that d-bomb that was catching bigger bass for them on that that application i was like damn i never thought about that and then even for us you know probably four or five years after we came out with the d-bomb uh i was looking for a bait that i could fish on the rocks it was post-spawn tournament we had on on gunnersville i was trying to fish something on those rocks that was slow but I could, but I could still use it like a bubba bait. It was not like a little dinky worm or something like that that I was throwing on the causeways. Right. I went to the D bomb with like a um, a quarter ounce. No, it was like an eighth ounce uh, head on it on a swing head, and was just slow rolling it, uh, bouncing it on those rocks on the causeways. And do I was catching keepers at will? Just I mean, two and three pounders like crazy. Yeah, easily, easily got a check. Had a good tournament. Never, never got that big bite on it. But man, uh, you know, like when I designed it, I never would have thought that I would be using it like that. What are some other uses that you would uh, wow. th- that you've seen that are kind of like non traditional for the D bomb? Well, I will always remember um, at the Potomac River, uh, I put it on the back of a chatterbait. Mm-hmm. and I swam it through the water, and I just go, oh, my God. I mean, when you <laughs> looked at all the appendages, the tail, everything moving with that chatterbait, there was so much action to it. And it was funny because my um, my co-angler was uh, fishing normal stuff behind a chatterbait. He had a twin-tail grub behind it. He was throwing the um, little swim baits and stuff behind it, yep. and he couldn't get a bite and stuff and i remember i i I somehow missed this piling and he goes man uh too bad you missed that piling. i'm about to make a cast there he goes there's a fish there and he throws over there and he doesn't get a bite and Mm -hmm. i'm just like yeah that was a good looking spot and he goes you should have thrown there and i'm like can i he goes yeah and i throw over there and i make a joke like got a big one and i didn't even have a bite yet and he just goes, oh, my God, you're kidding me. And I go, yeah, I am. And then all of a sudden, one five-pounder jacks it. And I go, nope, I do got one. And he's just like, oh you're my gosh. kidding me. He goes, you got an extra one of those D-bombs put on the back of my chatterbait? And I give him <laughs> one, and he ends up catching his limit on it. And and I know he was sold on them from there on out. So the back of a chatterbait, um, yeah. I've thrown it as a casting jig trailer. I've sight fished with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've used it as a swim jig trailer. I mean, yep. the, the D bomb is so versatile. You can flip it, pitch it, shake it, biffle head. I mean, uh, I've thrown it on a shaky head even, 
you know, yep. just because there were times where um, I was fishing a tournament up in Michigan on a lake we've never been to before, and I put the baby D-bomb on a shaky head and was catching uh, one of the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught. Uh, I think it was 6'3 or 6'4 oh, on a uh, major league fishing cup of it mm-hmm. with it. And, and and so I actually ended up missing the next round by one ounce and I hooked one on it as the buzzer went off and it doesn't count unless he's in the boat. And, but I just, I mean, there's so many different ways of fishing that if you're yeah. not fishing the regular D bomb or you're fishing a baby D bomb yep. and hopefully the Megla D bomb coming soon. Well, we, maybe. we, we will have, I will say we'll have another uh, addition, at least one addition to the D bomb family here uh, probably in, by the end of the calendar year 2024. So we'll just go ahead and put, throw that out there. Um, that's that's probably going to happen. But I mean, I tell you, it's it's been a, it's been an awesome bait. It's been a lot of fun to always have a bait that you have that much confidence in that you can take all over the all mm-hmm. over the country um, for me. And it, you know, just you know, this is American lure stories. We're talking about you know kind of how the D bomb got to be the D bomb. Um, but it's one of those baits also that I've seen other. Elite Series guys win Elite Series tournaments on the D bomb mm-hmm. and not be able to credit the D bomb. I know we we both know yep. a couple of the ones that, that I'm talking about ish, and so that that is like one of the biggest compliments. <laughs> they're, both, of, they're both full of D bombs. You can't you yeah you can't get a better compliment as a as a you know a bait maker or a bait designer or you know somebody is fishing with that bait like you can't that that just gives you even more confidence that to know that it beat everybody else because the dude was throwing throwing that bait uh and then you know again this is american lure right. stories these baits are made in america designed in america um and even the molds are made here in america so that's yeah and that's yeah. that's the whole other thing the baits are manufactured down in georgia and uh, in, in the mold, the, those the mold for the D bomb was made in Alabama. Uh, the, you know, all the molds we made for for missile, they're all in they're all in the U.S. somewhere. Uh, but you gotta, we have to bounce around from from different mold makers because man, those are that's a squirrely bunch, man. I guess it's something about working with that CAD software and watching the machinery. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but man, those people, it's like you can't use one more than for a couple of years, and then something squirrely sideways goes goes on. But um, but anyway. <laughs> It's all in America, and it's all good. So, uh, so there's at least there's some more other options yeah. to, to go for. Made, but made in America. That yeah, that's it. American lure stories, man. It's pretty. Uh, it's proud pretty to be wild. an American. That's right. Yeah, that's right, man. Well, uh, that I uh, want to. Um, just been a, it, but yeah, it's funny how many guys. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just curious on. It's just funny on how many guys. I I mean, I think of seven, eight, nine, ten guys right now that I, I see them at the tournament and I see the bottom of their boat and it's freaking D-bombs all over the bottom of their boat and they're, you know, they're not even sponsored by Missile. And, yeah, you're, you're right. It's, yeah. just, it, it's just awesome to see that. Yeah, we might have even reached a room with one of them that does that. <laughs> oh man but uh ish i just want to thank you for for coming on taking the time to carve out of your day to uh come in and talk about this american yeah. lure story of the d-bomb and uh and how you really were instrumental in helping i want to say thank you for for doing that as well but uh man uh hopefully we'll we'll get out thank there you and, for uh, making the best bait on the planet yeah hopefully we can get out there and uh flip up some more giants with it here uh me and you together that'd be cool Heck yeah, anytime. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate it, and I appreciate everybody for watching. And uh, if you've you've seen this, so you make sure you subscribe to uh, to Missile Baits on any social media platform. Uh, we'll be sure to tell you more stories and tell you more uh, information about how to catch more fish. And we'll have more information from uh, from Ish, Ish Monroe for sure. And then uh, be, if you have any other comments or any stories about the D-Bomb yourself, uh, drop them down there in the comments. We want to hear what you have to say, but we appreciate it everybody for watching and thanks again ish for for joining you joining us on this episode cool thank you